Um, but just to say officially welcome. Uh, this is the first of three Wikimedia showcase events that we have planned in for today. Uh, so we're kicking off with the Wikisource showcase with myself, uh, Ewan McAndrew. Uh, work, I work as the Wikimedian in residence at the university here. And Martin's kindly offered to help us with the proofreading demo uh, later on in the session. Uh, then we've got a Wikidata showcase, Wikimedia's newest project, and that uh, will kick off at half past 11 in the same place, and we're joined by Nav Evans from Histropedia, uh, which got a lot of love at Wikimania this year as well, and uh, Martin mentioned it as ever. So, um, and then later on in the afternoon, we have the Wikidata Advanced Query Workshop. Um, incidentally, the slides from today are all on SlideShare. Um, and there's a little bit.ly link that you could follow if you want to sort of download those and follow along. So, that's what's coming up. So, it's just important to note that Martin and myself work as Wikimedians, and Wikimedia is the charitable foundation that supports about 12 different projects, of which Wikipedia is obviously the best known. So it's nice to have events like this where we can showcase some of the other beautiful projects that we have in Wikidata and Wikisource. So this morning's session just should finish about five past 11, is about welcoming you to the Wikisource Library, which as Alan Moore says, libraries are a temple of learning, so who am I to argue with that? Uh, brief timeline, just to set the context, while next door kick off. Uh, Project Gutenberg obviously started with the digitization of the US Declaration of Independence and 30 years later, Wikipedia came along and people were putting longer texts onto Wikipedia and we needed a suitable home for those longer texts. So Wikisource came about at the old uh, URL link. Then in 2005, uh, about 15 different language versions of Wikisource were developed. Um, and then we had the little extension en.wikisource for the English language version. And then 2008, roughly, proofread ex page extension came along, which allowed us to quality assure the optical character recognition of text as they were uploaded to Wikisource. And then coming up more up to date, Wikidata came along, and that offers a whole range of possibilities, a lot of which we'll explore uh, later on today. So, what is Wikisource? Uh, as I said, it's an online digital library, human, cu curated, free, and it hosts out of copyright, public domain texts, but also CC0, CC BY, and CC BY SA licensed texts. It mainly holds, we could say, um, out of copyright older books but that would do it a disservice because it's also a treasure trove of novels, short stories, plays, poems, songs, letters, travel writing, non-fiction text, speeches, news articles, constitutional documents, court rulings, obituaries, eulogies, and much more besides. Um, so uh, the process is we take PDF or deja vu page scans are uploaded to Wikimedia Commons before being transcribed through OCR onto Wikisource, and at that point it comes a searchable HTML format, uh, which is then proofread by two different Wikisource users for quality assurance. Uh, and we have a traffic light system. Um, when they're first uploaded, they, the pages are marked as red, um, and they, they need to be checked by one user, and once they're checked by one user, then they move along to 
uh, the page stage becomes amber or yellow. And then a second different user comes along to validate the text. So it's checked twice, and at that point, it moves from yellow status to green, 100% validated, 100% checked. Uh, result is an online text library which is free to anyone to read with the added benefits of the text is quality assured, completely searchable, and downloadable as well. You can download uh, Wikisource text as PDF, EPUB, and Mobi formats. What does it do? Well, it, like other libraries, it's about freedom, freedom to read, freedom to, of ideas, communication, education, access to information, entertainment as well. And as one Wikimedian once put, quotations or images from centuries ago can still touch or inspire. So it's not what you do so much as what it means to you having access to that rich uh, text library. I think what I want to sort of express is one of the things that's strong about uh, Wikisource is the ability to go down the rabbit hole, which I, I, as a reader and enjoyer of public libraries, I appreciate about Wikisource as a digital library. If you love, have a library, you have a widespread of knowledge which allows you for randomness, original paths of learning you can forge for yourself into little trodden corners or odd bright side paths. There are lots of odd bright side paths in Wikisource. Um, and this was something that Martin referenced yesterday in a previous Wikisource session when he said that the author John Duncombe referenced a poet called Martha Peckard and a poem called Ode to Cynthia. And through the magic of Wikilinks, uh, we can see that poem and read it and appreciate what it was that John Duncombe saw in that poet and in that particular poem. So it allows for a different way of engagement and it also creates this lovely image of an 18th century web of authors citing each other, paying tribute to one another. And I like the idea of Lord Byron engaging with social media. I've run with this idea. If we think of Wikisource as a hyper library, then we have the author page this is what an author page looks like on Wikisource. And we have the what links here option on the left-hand menu. And it can show us what Lord Byron links to or who Lord Byron links to. And there's quite a range. There's John Nicholl at the University of Glasgow who wrote a biography about him. Um, Byron wrote about Marguerite Gardner and Richard Brinsley Sheridan. He also links through to works by William Hazlitt and Robert Southey. And Robert Southey, in turn, links through to Joan of Arc. William Hazlitt himself is quite richly uh, linked on Wikisource. He links to George Orwell, Byron, Washington Irving, Sir Walter Scott, Samuel Johnson, William Shakespeare, William Wordsworth, and more. So you can click through to their works. And sort of, oh, I'm quite curious to find out more about... Uh, um, this fellow William Shakespeare. And then you can go to William Wordsworth, and William Wordsworth will link on to Alfred Lord Tennyson, who will in turn link on to Victor Hugo, who in turn will link on to John Brown. And John Brown is someone I want to mention as an interesting little odd bright side path. Uh, here's an American militant abolitionist uh, who made who was executed by the state of Virginia prior to the American Civil War, but he made a very impassioned speech uh, to the court at his trial, and that speech is available on Wikisource. And uh, so it shows you the range of different sort of texts you can find on Wikisource. But there's, I mentioned earlier that Victor Hugo links to John Brown's page, and Victor Hugo wrote a letter to the London News about the trial of John Brown. And on the Wikipedia page for Victor Hugo, it mentions this about how Victor Hugo wrote to the London News saying, let America know and ponder on this. There is something more frightening than Cain killing Abel, and that is Washington 
killing Spartacus. But the interesting part here is also that right next to this quote is it says Wikisource has original text related to this very article, i.e. Victor Hugo's letter to the London News. So this is one click away from uh, Wikipedia's site, which is now recognised as by pretty much, hopefully, everyone as the number one information site. And so that sort of level of linkage and visibility is, is one of the big selling points of Wikisource. But portals is one way of na navigating Wikisource. And uh, John Brown's speech features in port the portal on speeches and groups or types of text are all grouped together and you can look at, at the portal of speeches and there's a featured speech there for a house divided given by Abraham Lincoln but there are also portals for constitutional documents, court rulings, scripts, fiction and it's just another way of interacting with the text on Wikisource. Uh, there is also uh, portals for associations or organizations like Houses of Parliament have their own portal as well. But another way of looking and f accessing information on uh, Wikisource is through categories. So there's a range of texts and one of the types of texts is suicide notes. So there's a category for suicide notes. So if you are of a macabre bent and want to read about Fanny Godwin's uh, suicide note or Vincent van Gogh's suicide note, there is a category just there for you. So, but categories are another way of organising and searching for text on Wikisource and these hyperlinked ca categories appear at the bottom of the page whereas portals are linked to from the top of the page. You can also search them like that as in the title there, category colon suicide notes and that should come up in the search box as well. Be curious. Very true, very true. But another category uh, benefit is that you can actually build a corpus of citations. Who's citing who? And this is something that they've run with in Italian Wikisource. And what this category is showing here is it says, texts in which Dante Alighieri is cited. And we have a whole list of all these works that cite Dante Alighieri. So we can do a whole range of citation analysis based on the... the the works are categorized in this area. So that's something, an area for future development as well. Just in case you think it's all old text, there, there is the Chilcot report. Um, we could do a proofreading demo on that, but I think after 2.6 million words, <laughs> people might get a little tired. But it shows you as well what the proofreading extension uh, looks like you have your index page and you have the pages down the bottom and the red ones are still to be proofread the yellow ones have been checked by one user and once they go from yellow they are validated by a, a second user to go to the 100% validated green stage green to go so we're also trying to think more holistically and link from Wikipedia to Wikisource so for Robert Louis Stevenson, we have links at the bottom of his page that says Wikisource has original works written by or about Robert Louis Stevenson, and there are also links to the other projects there as well. So just one click away. So if we think more holistically, not separating into silos, uh, something Claire Knowles was talking about yesterday, about works being separated into silos, Wikimedia wants everything to be a bit more integrated. You can't really separate a man from his works. So we could have his article on Wikipedia, his longer works on Wikisource, images on Wikimedia Commons, and data um, publicly in the, sorry, in the public domain, such as place of birth, place of death, and that can be visualized in any number of different ways on Wikidata. One other lovely thing is that there are beautiful illustrations in uh, some of these anti-copyright -co texts and sometimes it's hard to find images to use that are in the public domain um, or copyright free to use on Wikipedia. But if there are particularly lovely images, maps, drawings, photographs on Wikisource, then we can crop them 
and um, put them into other Wikimedia projects to help illustrate articles. Uh, and that, that's something that we've done recently, opening up out of copyright collections to a worldwide audience of millions, as was mentioned yesterday. Uh, we had this 17th century map of Iceland from the Edinburgh University's collections, which got 1.6 million page views after a four week period once Richard, name and shame, put it into the German Wikipedia um, on Iceland. So this, this map was put into the page on German Wikipedia. It's now on English Wikipedia's page for Iceland. So by putting it into relevant pages on Wikipedia, we can open it up to millions. And the largest spike was uh, coincided with England's shock loss to Iceland. So apologies for bringing that up if anyone's <laughs> upset still. So adding value to library collections. Adding out of copyright text to Wikisource makes it more visible, discoverable, accessible, and searchable. And by proofreading the text by two different users, it ensures that the text is 100% quality checked. But it's also a lovely collaborative space where you can interact with other Wikisource users that are interested in texts and preserving texts. Um, and a more local example of working with collections material, we'd like to sort of if there are good collections available in places like Edinburgh C C Central Libraries that have particularly rich texts, like Ethel Moyer's World War I Diary, which has details her time in the Scottish Women's Hospital during World War I in Romania and Russia, but it's also got lots of beautiful drawings, postcards, and photographs documenting her time with the Scotland's Women's Hospital. So, we're speaking to Edinburgh Central Libraries about maybe seeing if we can transcribe that text and take some of the images to uh, Wikipedia and maybe also sort of have a edit-a-thon celebrating Ethel Moore and create an article on her linking her with the work of Elsie Ingalls. So that's the digitization process. Uh, you take printed books, you digitize them, you can upload them to Internet Archive or they can go straight to Commons. And the images can be extracted to our media repository, Wikicommons. The OCR text goes into Wikisource. And these can both link up with Wikipedia, images to Wikipedia and citations and links to Wikisource editions from Wikipedia articles as well. So I'll just, before Martin runs through the proofreading demo, I'll just show you an Edinburgh lad on Wikisource by looking at Robert Louis Stevenson's page. And on the front page of Wikisource, we have a featured text. We also have the proofread of the month, and that's a good place to cut your teeth uh, to begin editing and transcribing. Uh, there's also links to the other projects on the left-hand menu, and download links, download as PDF, download as EPUB, download as Mobi. But just to show you the way that you can search within text, Nav, what was your search term that you came up with? Oh, uh, what was that? A moist eyebrows? Moist eyebrows. <laughs> this is Nav's suggestion. <laughs> so here we have moist eyebrows, and it brings up a lodging for the night by Robert Louis Stevenson. And just to show you that a bit clearer, there we have moist eyebrows, completely searchable. You can find that, you can probably find anything else as well. Well, there, yeah, so, oh, soft, what light from yonder window breaks. If we search for that, that will bring up Romeo and Juliet. So we can, it's another level of engagement. This is completely searchable HTML transcription. So. If we wanted to search for a lodging for the night a bit more simply, we could do in title, colon, lodging for the night. And hopefully this will bring it up. There we go. And also we could do a search for Robert Louis Stevenson. 
But this brings up everything related to Robert Louis Stevenson, including some biographies by Edmund Goss and a red-linked item by Gilbert Keith Chesterton that's not yet been uploaded. I think it was deleted, so we need to get that back up if we can find a good copy of it. But if we wanted to, if we knew that he was an author, which we do, we could just do an author search, Robert Louis Stevenson, and this would bring us to Robert Louis Stevenson a bit quicker. But there's also a link down at the bottom of this page. There we go. So this shows you what an author page looks like on Wikisource. Birth date, death date, and there are links to the other projects. His Wikipedia article, his link to images on Wikicommons, Wikiquotes, and Wikidata. But it shows you the range of texts on Wikisource that we've got his novels on there, short stories, there's even some audio books as well from LibriVox, uh, short story collections, poems, essays, letters. I think there was a section on travel writing there as well. And at the bottom, lots of categories. So you can see you can go to Victorian poets as well and find lots of other poets in there like Tennyson and John Clare. And you can also do the what links here and Robert Louis Stevenson will eventually take you through to Leonardo da Vinci through his friend Sidney Colvin. We have a link via Sidney Colvin that way. Um, so just to round up, I'll just show you the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, just to see how 100% validated texts, what it looks like. So we have checked, completely checked Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's 100% checked. All the pages will be green. And we can click into them. And we can see the proofreading extension that Martin's going to demonstrate where you have the scan on the right hand side of the page and the bit that you can edit the searchable HTML on the left hand side that's been optical character recognition. And that's about it and this is where Martin will take over and I think. Indeed. Thanks very much.